O'Brien. What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. This is the Tom O'Brien Show. Uh, first things first, I want to talk about before we get into what's going on in the market and some stories. Go over to TFNN.com here. Okay, so Larry's been resting for the past few days. He had some issues with his voice. Um, however, tomorrow I called him, and uh, tomorrow he is good to go. We're doing the live trading Fridays again with Larry Pesavento. So if you haven't done one of these yet, this is awesome. Okay, so it starts at 9 Eastern time, runs until noon, and it's just Larry trading. And it is really cool to kind of see what he does. You know, the newsletters are phenomenal because you're getting this kind of constant insight. Um, but it's another thing to really watch, you know, some of our traders actually trade, which I think is uh, really awesome. You go in ahead uh, here. So we do this the second and fourth Friday of every month. You know, this is going to be the fourth Friday of this month. So you're going to wait to the second Friday of uh, July if you, you know, you get it today. You go in here and we're doing it. If this is your first month, you can go type in Larry June 24 right here in the promo code area. If you already have an account, just go ahead and click the log in here. Uh, but yeah, that's going to give you 50 bucks off your first month. And uh, if you need any help with that, you can go ahead and email me at jacob at tfnn.com. Let's go see what we're looking at today. Well, in the E-mini, we're off about, we're kind of flat right now, off about 0.08%. And the SPY, we are uh, totally flat right now as well. The Russell Futures up about 0.56%. NQs up about 018 And the Dow Futures down slightly. And then uh, the, the total DJI we are sideways right now, a little bit to the downside at 0.06%. Gold having a somewhat positive day, which was nice after a few days of uh, downward movement. Trading at 2,337. We will be having Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle on, and I know a lot of you guys uh, really enjoy his metal analysis on top of his market analysis as well. Silver sideways right now. Yeah. Just kind of a sideways day with it. Crude oil up a little bit, 81.83, which is fantastic. Uh, let's see what else we got going on. DXY still up in its higher trading range. So we did breach that 106 briefly and came right back down. Um, we are, you know, anticipating a test of like a higher level, about 107. Uh, definitely brings some pressure into the market as well, selling wise. Uh, let's take a look at Micron. So, again, big on the AI hype, okay? I think this gives you a little insight into what could happen if... So, they, they did have good quarterlies, but their forward guidance was just in line, right? Uh, this caused kind of a sell-off a little bit with it, and I, I mean, this is a 5.6%, and I think kind of the idea is, is like, well, if they're not expecting any kind of accelerated growth or anything, and it's kind of in line with, with traditional estimates... Um, why invest in this? Why not go try something else? I think there's a little bit of that as well. But, you know, with this massive move we've been seeing, investing in this, you know, chip stocks and, and really AI, if you get any, you know, one or two quarters that aren't going to be as rosy, I'm, I'm interested to see what that sell-off might be like, because I believe it will happen as well. People want to take profits, and then we'll wait to see uh, for a big setup. So let's look at this a little bit. Earned an adjusted $0.62 cents a share on sales of $6.81 billion. Uh, in the quarter ended May 30th. There was an analyst poll. They were saying that they were expected to earn 48 cents a share. So again, like this was a decent quarter for them, right? Uh, this is on sales of 6.67. So that was expected, and they had 6.81. And the year earlier, Micron lost an adjusted 143 a share on sales of 3.75 billion. And that really, I think, is a nice snapshot to see what this run uh, with the chips and, and really the AI boom uh, is doing. For the current quarter, Micron predicted adjusted earnings of a buck oh eight a share on sales of seven point six billion. Analysts were modeling earnings of one oh two a share on sales of seven point five nine billion in the fiscal fourth quarter. In the same quarter last year, Micron lost an adjusted. So, I mean, this is pretty nuts, right? Robust AI demand and strong execution enabled Micron to drive seventy percent sequential revenue growth, exceeding guidance range in Q three. So. Micron tumbled more than 5% to 135 during the regular session on Wednesday. Micron stop, uh, stock climbed 0.9%, uh, closed at 142.36. And yeah, it's just because they didn't have like super stellar guidance going forward. Not that it was going to be bad or anything. I mean, they're still growing, but it's just not anything that was uh, impressed Wall Street, essentially, right? And this may be 
setting up too for kind of like an overreaction, right? Where you might settle up really like down about, you know, 2% or 3% as opposed to, you know, 5.5%. Uh, so it'd be interesting to take a look at with that. Um, you know, one of the things I want to talk about too, which is kind of interesting, give me a second to pull my stock here. Um, so first things first, you know, we've spoken a little bit on here about the massive data centers and everything, and this is really what this, this drive in the chip sectors is going to fuel, right? Um, and how we're not producing enough energy, okay? And this is gonna get kind of weird, but follow with me on it, okay? So first things first, US, US energy production exceeded consumption by a record amount in 2023, which is uh, actually kind of cool. And so that shows us getting to a point where we're able to produce, I mean, we're still producing more, right? And consumption is just kind of ticking off a little bit from here. But you know, one of the things we've spoken about too is uh, some of these large companies like Microsoft, for instance, hiring nuclear czars to try to figure out how to make um, local nucle nuclear reactors to kind of power uh, these big data centers. And one of the things they came across is something really fascinating. Um, that in about 20 years from now is what some of these researchers are saying, but they're, they're going to be use something called brain organoids for computation. So a lot of computation is done, you know, with silicon, and the argument is, is that what our brains are made out of uh, do a far better job of handling data and transmitting it uh, than silicon. And, and this is nuts. I'm going to go ahead and pull this over here. This is from nature.com. You know, it's sad. You can only get the abstract for a lot of these um, unless you work for an institution or you want to shell out, you know, whatever, like a hundred bucks. So I'm going to go through this. Brain-inspired computing hardware aims to emulate the structure and working principles of the brain and could be used to address current limitations in artificial intelligence technologies. So not only because of the computation, right, uh, restrictions on silicon, uh, but also the energy requirement, right? I mean, these are the same cells that our brains are, right? You, you, you get a stem cell and you add uh, a growth factor for brains and you, and you get this weird little matrix of brain cells and you've got to feed it like nutrients, but it's not as energy taxing as something like, um, you know, massive data centers are. Anyways, stay tuned folks, we'll be right back.